We're here, we're at the, uh, the Kenna Metal. Some people might know that story, if you don't, check it out. The Kenna Metal DN Solutions SVM 4100. We're doing a bit of an upgrade. Kind of a next chapter for us with this machine and with our shop even, because this will be new to our shop and our business and our capabilities. Here we got it. A Little bit of a box. We're gonna open it up, check it out. What do you think we got in here? The uh, screws are already, well, actually, looks like, looks like the screws are already ripped out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they've been ripped out for sure. All right, well, here we go. Oh, okay, all right, well. I was, uh, was hoping it was packed a little better than that, but, uh, but this is a used unit. Man, it looks clean though. I don't think this ever saw coolant. So what we got here is a little tilt rotary unit. Pretty cute. There's the drive. It's interesting it got pulled out of the machine with the unit. A lot of times that would just stay in the machine. Here we have powerful desiccant. I would guess it's all desiccanted. No more desiccating. What else we got in here? I'm, wonder, I'm wondering if we have a faceplate in here. So here's the drive. I mean, the cables have seen better days, but come take a look at the cables, Zach. They look more or less intact. And get us by at least. No, so I don't I don't see a faceplate. Was hoping there was a faceplate. I'm not sure we would use it anyways, but kind of wanted to have the option. I don't know if you can see that, but that, that, whatever it was running, that's that's what it was. Some type of plastic or fiber, which you know the fact that I mean there's there is not a drop of coolant on this thing. That is generally a pretty darn good sign. Hopefully the bearing seals held up well. I would suspect they would again without that having that coolant around. Well, you can see it's got um, pass-through for uh, hydraulics and pneumatics here. I don't know that we'll use those at this point, but would love to be able to put a pallet changer on this machine down the road, and that would help with that. Actually, Coma sells a uh, uh, pallet unit that will bolt right on the side of the machine and stick a little, uh, little gantry in and pull off the pallet. So, uh, you know, maybe that'll be in the future. One, one of our guys there, uh, we were just uh, scoping it out to see what size uh, eye bolts we need. Uh, to lift this out. Not that we really need it, it's not that terribly heavy, but uh, one of my guys made the, uh, the offhand comment, M10 or N12, which one of those takes a half inch bolt? Here we go, eyelets, lifting hooks, lifting eyes, whatever you want to call them. They're not hooks, obviously. So I'm gonna hold this off right here because this, you got your seam right there. I want my hook right about there. So I'm gonna grab this end, put my splice where I want it, and then work my way to the other end, and then feed that through. This really doesn't weigh that much. We could probably manhandle it, but why do that? About like that. Get it through, Not like that. Not so bad. Okay, I was worried we'd find a whole bunch of uh, plastic fibers in there. But no, man, she's squeaky clean other than a little bit of fiber on the bottom there, but nothing like you'd find in a machine where this was run with coolant. So we'll clean this up a little bit and put it back together. Right. Ooh, here we go. They left the peel, peel, peel film on this. Now she gets to have a fresh start. Oh. Oh.
And that's where we're gonna leave her sit for a minute. All right, so we got the uh, the Coma TWA 130 cleaned up, that used unit. It's pretty pretty nice shape. So in the coming weeks, it's gonna get installed on the DN Solutions SVM 4100. Day two. Mark and I attempted to film an unboxing. Uh, well, I should say we attempted. We did film it. However, there was no audio because I forgot to turn the mic on. So uh, we're gonna reopen this package here from Fifth Axis. Um, got ourselves some things. We'll open this up. I don't know. It's not going to be quite feel quite as exciting this time because now I've seen it. Now I open her up here and see what we got. So, box one. Let's see here. We have this tremendous packaging. My goodness, that stuff is uh, stupendous. And here we have the. It's not really a pyramid, but the base for our dovetail, which we already have somewhere here. Uh, we bought it separate because um, we wanted to do some test cutting first. That was successful, so we went ahead and are putting the rest of the system together now. So, get that guy on like that, and this guy goes like that, and I don't have an Allen wrench handy, but, but that's what that guy goes like. So, that's pretty stupendous. Nice, beautiful finishes on there. Pull studs, or zero points, or whatever you want to call them. Probably just gonna call them pull studs. All right, what do we got in here? So this, Right here is the uh, RL96A-601000. This is the Rock Lock base. Whoa. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Suction cups? No, those are little protectors. Oof. Look at that. The only mark. I, I mean, just car. look at it. Yeah. I mean, just get a look at that. We're going to start with the aluminum. We'll see how that treats us. You see that guy. Goes in there like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, make that noise too. I, I hope not. <laughs> Funny story here. Mark and I stared at that for, I don't know, like a minute going, why does it say open in both directions? It doesn't. They're both actually, they're both actually going clockwise. <laughs> this here is the zero plate. We'll use this to indicate it all in and true everything up, make sure it's running rock solid. So that's that guy. All oiled up nice. Three days later. Was that cool, Zach? Did I do good? So this is uh, one of the next steps here in getting the uh, two-axis rotary installed on our DN Solutions SVM 4100. It's going to give us five-axis capability. Yeah, more technically speaking, it's going to be four plus one, but it's any four at any time. But it'll give us five axis positional for sure and four axis live. So this is a box of stuff uh, that Coma sent in to install the Sudacoma uh, rotary unit that we uh, we picked up. I'm not sure if they want me to open this box or not, but you know, uh, they shipped it here and I'm going to open it. So here we're going to do, we're going to cut her open a little bit. I'm going to use my good old Stanley, uh, what model number we got here? We got a 10-788. I like these guys because they let me store extra blades. Right there, I got fresh blades ready to go. Blades pop in and out real nice and easy. Oh, I like it. Oh, hey, you didn't cut the top. Not that I probably needed to, but now we did. Let's see, let's see. What is all the things they ship to install the Sudacoma Rotary Union? We got some fluff bags. More fluff bags. Ooh, ooh, fun stuff. We got some relays that are bent sideways because maybe it wasn't packaged the best. <clears throat> but I imagine they'll be all right. Anyways, uh, let's see, that looks like fiber. Some more fiber. Those are some Fanuc part numbers there. Ooh, more cabling. This is all going to be cabling for inside the control cabinet. Ooh, air fittings, air lines. I wonder if they have a umbilical. Here, let me smush this on the microphone. Does that sound good? Sorry, Zach. 
So yeah, so there's there's some more good stuff in here. Zach, you might just have to shoot in the top. I don't think I want to pull this all apart. Let's see, you can see here the connections, the airline. There's more connections for the other unit. And then there's the spring to hang it from the ceiling. We're gonna do it all up right nice, nice. I like it. Not too much fun in here. I was expecting uh I'm surprised there's not a drive, but I guess we'll find out. But yeah, so Sudacoma's supposed to be here later today. Uh, or not Sudacoma, Coma. I think that's their, their US branch, it's called Coma. They're gonna be here later today to do the install and uh, they're gonna need this kit. So that's what we got there. That one's not quite as showy. Lots of cables and things, but full, real full kit of stuff for them to do a proper install. So that's nice. Eventually. And drop for getting the uh, new access rotary there on the, the DN solution, the SVM 4100 from my good friends. Yeah, the metal. We made some toe clamps. So fancy little toe clamps, but they're all sized right on. So we don't have to use some stair step locks or anything like that. Okay. Sit right in there, kiss up on it, and be beautiful. The next day. I don't know, seeming pretty good. So you said, you, know, you said it's all pretty well bulletproof and indicated in. We gotta get that other clamp on the back side. I forgot to yeah, stop at the hardware it is, store. It is straight right now. I would recheck okay. it when you get those other clamps on there. Just make sure it didn't. Sure. It's straight right now. And there's there's no zero on that right now to worry about until yeah. we get correct that yep. tilted work plane in. Correct. Yeah, Adam was here. He just from uh, Coma. He just finished up the install of the uh, a TWA TWA 130. It's a Sudacoma installed by Coma Precision. How does that work exactly? Are you guys the? So we're the same. We're same the same, the same thing. Yeah. It's just it's easier to yeah. say Coma than Sudacoma. Yep. Yeah. Our uh, our table headquarters is in. Uh, Windsor, Connecticut. Okay. And then our integration department is out of Aurora, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. So, Excellent. but we're all under the same umbrella. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it was pretty seamless install. Beautiful install. Everything's in there, real nice and pretty. So uh, we'll get some close-ups on that and do some jogging around and things. But super easy. Appreciate uh, Coma's yeah. assistant and, and Adam. You did a wonderful job. Appreciate yeah, you. you. Nice to get to meet yeah. you. Yes. And. Uh, Hopefully I see you on the next one, not right. necessarily on this exactly. one. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Adam. You. Yep. Yeah. What's next? Well, then we got to get the, uh, uh, we got to get our spindle adapter on, which Mark made up last week. So we'll get that little guy on there. And then the fifth axis rock lock on there. So we'll get that bolted on, that bolted on. Um, that gives us the height to clear, and then our dovetail clamp on. Um, and then we got to, well actually before we put the dovetail clamp on, we got to use our uh, our zero plate and, and set the A-axis zero, because we're going to zero it right where we want it um, for, for the clamp. So um, we're not going to use this side, because that confuses Mark and I. We're going to use that side there. It should be good. getting things indicated and lined up, all beautiful like. This is the uh, setting master for the fifth axis. And um, they've got it set up real beautiful. We had a, a moment of panic. I'm like, how am I gonna tighten that after we indicate it? Well, they've got it set up so you can get through your bolt holes. Uh, we're happy to using this, this, this pattern here. Um, but of course, it looks like that axis here. And if your pattern's outside, you can get at it, of course. So. Um, yeah, so we're getting this uh, all dialed in. Looking pretty schnazzy. Coma, Coma got us uh, real lined up, real nice. Um, so we're getting this guy lined up. So far, so good. All right, so now we're indicating this guy in. And we're gonna get that straight. Mark's gonna sweep it across there for us. That's looking pretty good. And then uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, we can see we've got our A position there. We're gonna adjust that to be our zero. Uh, and we're gonna set that as our zero because most of our guys are right-handed and we want our clamp for the rock lock on the right-hand side here. So, um, so we're gonna establish that as our zero, uh, which means we gotta flip the bit 
and uh, set that on the absolute encoders because this uh, coma unit can be set up with trip dogs uh, for zero or absolute encoders. So uh, for our installation, we opted to go with absolute encoders. So we're gonna set that right where we want it. All right, so we're sweeping in the B axis now. Well, we've got that where we like it. And rather than doing a method of setting zero, it's called flip the bit. On this one, I'm actually going to do a, a adjustment. So you can see we're off by three standard, um, excuse me, three, not three standard, but 0 0.003 degrees, which is three in least input increment. So we're going to go to our settings. We're going to turn parameter right enables already on. S2, we're going to go to 1844, search. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure which way I need to adjust this guy. So we are gonna do least input increment of three. So we're gonna add three to that number. Well, they're gonna subtract three from it. We're gonna take it further negative. So we're gonna go negative nine, three, four. Negative nine, three, four. Oh, wrong mode, yep, gotta be an MDI. Negative nine, three, four input and that's going to require us to power, power cycle and so when we come back we'll check and see if, if I went the right way or not. I don't know. I, I could, could spend time thinking about it but sometimes it's faster just to do it one way than do it the other. We will see. All right so we use that. We got her in right where we want her. Got a little bit of wiggle but really not much at all. So again, I like to use that uh, parameter 19, uh, excuse me, 1844, parameter 1844 to set the, uh, uh, the reference amount to the first grid shift or something like that, I forget what. Uh, but when I get it dialed in close, um, I don't like flipping the bit anymore because oftentimes when you flip the, flip the bit, brakes release and things, and things squiggle just a little bit. Um, and uh, I know there are, you know, compensation methods and things like that, but I find it's better when you're real close like this, you just go ahead, get it dialed in where you want it, figure out what your offset is, convert it to least input increment. Um, oftentimes you have to do that in metric, mind you, uh, depends on the machine, and then modify that offset in the parameter, um, which is essentially what it is. And uh, I actually went the wrong direction first on B-axis, so I had to go back in, flip it the other way. Now we're reading good. All right, we are slowly via MDI, getting a little more accustomed to using our rotary. And uh, this is stuff you wanna try, uh, you know, scientifically, not uh, just in the middle of a program and see what happens. So what we did is we pre-intentionally programmed an over travel on the B axis just to see what would happen. And in this case, it did its pre-check. Oops, touch screen. It did its pre-check and determined it was gonna be an over travel move before it even attempted it. Wonderful, love that. Thank you, Deanne. We got our fifth axis rock lock on there with our dovetail fixture. Got some S7 grabbed in that little uh, dovetail. Uh, we're gonna give that a go um, soon. Um, this is on our freshly installed Sunacoma TWA-130. Great install here, gonna get a little picture. Look at that, look at that. Now we have this set up with uh, um, with the option for absolute encoders, or uh, uh, trip dogs is the other option, but with absolute encoders, if we disconnect any of these cables, we have to reset the absolute position, which uh, isn't, a, isn't a big deal, but it also means you don't want to be doing it um, every week. If you want to do take it off, off and on regularly, you'd want to go to uh, um, trip dogs for setting your zero position. So, um, but yeah, our intention is to leave it on here.